I welcome you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Nice meeting you. My name is uh, Ilango. I call uh, Ilango Durai. And uh, by the grace of God, we were able to finish about 50 parts of Revelation. And today we are starting the book of Acts, Acts of the Apostles. Whereas in Tamil, I am teaching uh, the book of Luke. So I thought I will start the Acts of the Apostles. Please do pray, there are newcomers. I welcome you all. And uh, do come regularly so that you will be really blessed. I will share the screen with you now. Acts of the Apostles. See, this is the fifth book of the New Testament and uh, most of you might be knowing about the book, but only when you study, you will know in detail about this book. The title of the book is called The Acts of the Apostles, but when you are going through the New Testament books, especially the Acts of the Apostles, you will find more of the Acts of the Holy Spirit throughout the book. But there is no title found in the book as the Acts of the Apostles. The title was given to the book. So we will learn about it. What are the Acts of the Apostles? And you also can say acts of Jesus Christ through Holy Spirit. And you can say acts of the Holy Spirit. While the acts of the Holy Spirit are going on, in contrast you find the Holy Spirit, evil spirit also is acting there. In the book of the acts. And I have given to you the timeline the timeline of the Acts of Apostles down for your reference. And uh, this is the, there are many newcomers coming gradually. I just want to give you many of my old slides which will be useful to the newcomers. So please bear with me. You may be thinking that uh, I am repeating the whole things. No. Because you are, some of you are attending in Tamil Bible study and English Revelation. But this is uh, worth showing even to the world people and the newcomers. So, when the books of the Bible are concerned, I have given you the simple method of remembering how the world, what are the number of, total number of books in the Old Testament. You see? Easy method to remember the total number of Bible books. Old has three letters, Testament has nine letters. So you have about 39 Old Testament books. When three is multiplied by nine, 27, that is 27 New Testament books. And I have written all the names of the books in, in your palm. You can bring the entire book in your palm. You see, this is the world and then it is being categorized. Historical books, minor, major, poetical books, major and minor, prophetical books, you have gospels, church history, that is the acts of the apostles we are going to meditate today. So the epistles and prophetical books. And these are the nations you know, gospel was taken to during the acts of the disciples or the apostles. 
and uh, we ought to be familiar with the geographical of the land of Israel as well. God told Jesus told them that you will be a witness to me in uh, Judea, Samaria, Jerusalem, ends of the earth. We should know where is Judea, where is Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria, where is the end of the earth. The, I have given you the detail of the land. See, you have the Mediterranean Sea on the left side. And Israel is divided into three parts, Galilee, Samaria and Judea. You see, so the, we should know why when, when Jesus said that, you will be my witness in Jerusalem, Samaria and Judea. You should know where is Jerusalem, where is Samaria, where is Judea. And Sea of Galilee, Dead Sea, all the details are given here. And also Israel at the time of Jesus Christ. These were divided into many parts and divided, ruled by the Roman emperors. Decapolis, Idumea, you see, uh, Trachonitis, all this, Samaria. So how these were divided and ruled by the Romans? From where the first search charted, you need to know all the geographical, geographical places. And the Greek Empire came prior to the Roman Emperor, Empire. So this is the Greek Empire prior to Roman, according to the Daniel, uh, you know, prophecy. I don't want to go there once again. And after the Greek, Alexander the Great, Romans occupied the place. That's the Roman Empire. These are all the places of importance in the books of the Acts of the Apostles. It shows the geographical, you know, uh, spread of Christianity in Rome and to the far ends of the earth. How gospel was taken. These are the regions around the Mediterranean Sea where gospel was taken to. So Acts, the book of Acts, describes the geographical spread of Christianity from Jerusalem to Rome and who took it, how it was taken and what are the problems they faced while taking gospel to the ends of the earth. Along with it, the cultural spread also from Jews to the Gentiles was spreading. So you need to know all the places around these regions, Green Crescent area, we call it Fertile Crescent in the Old Testament. Abraham started from here and then reached Palestine, then went to Egypt, that's the route. And we have to be familiar with it. These are the regions where Paul made missionary journey. Paul made about four missionary journeys. Usually three, third one, fourth one also they call it fourth missionary journey. And the spread of gospel, you know the Old Testament time, it was around this region, if you read the Old Testament, incidents happened around the region where I have marked a blue, in blue. But when it comes to New Testament, during the Acts of the Apostles, Gospel reached the other side also. So when you read the book of Acts of the Apostles, you will know how the good news was taken to the far ends of the earth according to the command of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let us see about the writer. Who is the author? Author of course is the Holy Spirit. Who wrote the book of the Acts of Apostles? Of course you know very well. He is Luke. 
his doctor look actually he is a by profession he is a doctor so if you see colossians 4 14 it says that look the beloved physician sends you his greetings and also demos he is a physician he is a doctor professionally he is a doctor and you will find throughout the entire book the touch of the doctor the wordings used by him in the acts of the apostles high fever it's about epilepsy he mentions pregnancy of mary elizabeth he is really well versed with everything as a physician you will find him as a physician and he is from antioch in syria this is a place in antioch you can say that the ancient university was in antioch where all learned people the romans and the greek culture philosophers they were there in these regions he is from antioch and if you go through the books you know dr lu is not only a writer he is a historian in you know the new testament era or even before there was a jewish writer his name was josephus if you see his collections you will find about lot of details he is a very famous historian you need any any cross reference any doubt about bible you go and see the book of josephus book the big volume written by josephus same way dr lu is a historian as many have undertaken to compile the account of the things accomplished among us by the way i want to inform you that i will be using new international version in this bible study earlier i was using new american standard bible but this time i am going to use new international version okay now as they were handed down to us by those who from the beginning were eye witnesses and servants of the word it seemed fitting for me as well having investigated everything carefully from the beginning to write it out for you in consecutive order normal person cannot write down everything in a consecutive order nor other people who are talented only will investigate first you know when you do any medical presentation or any research papers they go to different continents and collect details before being the present the presentation may be lasting for about 30 to 40 minutes but the amount of time to collect the information may be many years many lot of effort i have helped doctor to collect material to organize them to do the powerpoint for them i used to help them in doing presentation there are a lot of books a lot of information same way somebody is playing you know just a second same way the presentation may be a short period but he says that investigated everything carefully from the beginning so that you may know the exact truth about the things you have been taught you see one second somebody has scribbled is an interpretation
something uh, I couldn't erase the. It's okay. One second, I'll stop and sh start again. All right. So he is a historian. He investigated everything carefully from the beginning to write it out in a consecutive order. Most excellent Theophilus. I'll talk about most excellent Theophilus later. So then there was a man called Sir William Ramsey. He wanted to prove that Dr. Luke is wrong. It is evident Luke was very careful to provide historically accurate account in both the Gospel and Acts. Luke wrote two volumes. Volume one is Gospel according to Luke. Volume two, Acts of the Apostles. So this man called William Ramsey, archaeologist, who started his career to prove Luke to be in error. He wanted to make he wanted to prove the world that Luke is, Luke is wrong. So he made a research to prove that there are many people who try to prove that Bible is wrong. Here, this man was trying to prove that Dr. Luke is wrong. He did a research and then he offered this testimony as a result of his research. He says, Luke is a historian of the first rank. Not merely are his statements of fact trustworthy, he is possessed of the true historic sense. In short, this author should be placed along with the greatest historians. Luke is providing about 30 years of the early church history. And also Dr. Luke, you will find him traveling with Apostle Paul. Because, you know, from third person to first person, till the 16th chapter, Luke was writing, they went, they did. But after 16th chapter, he writes, we, we sought to go into Macedonia. As we, the first one on, the passage comes there. So from through, from the passages returned in Acts, after 16th chapter, you will find we, we, we. That's why I have given here, we passage. We look, traveled with Paul, these are the evidence. When we had, when he had seen the vision immediately, who Paul, we sought to go into Macedonia. So Paul, Dr. Luke, to accompany Paul. So putting out to sea from Troas, we ran straight because of Samathros. Samathres. There are many passages. We were staying in the city for some days. And on Sabbath day, when we went outside the gate to have riverside, Philippi, city of Philippi, where Lydia came. So he is a historian. And he traveled along with Paul and witnessed all the places, what all happened, witnessed everything. And then next passage it says a woman named Lydia from the city of Thyatira. She is a missionary to Europe, this Lydia. Lord opened her heart to respond to the things spoken by Paul. Dr. Luke is writing. When she and her household have been baptized, she urged us, saying, if you have judged me, to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and stay. And there was an evil possessed 
slave girl. He mentions that a slave girl having a spirit of divination met us. us. See, there, there are many passages which proves that Paul was accompanying, uh, that Luke was accompanying Paul. Now, why do I present all this? Before going in details about the book of Acts, we should know about the writer. Dr. Paul is a, uh, Dr. Luke is a, you know, he's well versed everything. Historically, geographically, he knows individual profile. He knows about Zachariah, Lazarus. He knows about uh, Martha, Mary, Joseph. He investigated every individual. He will, you will find writing about many persons in, in both the books. In both, you know, volumes, both parts, part one and two. And also, Luke is a missionary too. You see, Paul writes in Colossians for his writers. Paul, uh, Luke, the physician, sending his greetings. Luke is with me, Luke, my fellow workers. So he is also a worker. In fact, oh, look, if you take the entire book of uh, New Testament, 25% of percentage was written by Dr. Luke in two volumes. Gospel according to Luke as well as Acts of the Apostles. His contribution to the book of the New Testament is 25%. You see, I have given you the details about the contribution of each author. Paul wrote about 13 to 14 books, including when you add a Hebrews, it becomes 14. There is controversy whether Hebrews was written by Paul or not. That's the reason why I have put 13 or 14. Paul wrote about 27.8% through 14 books. Whereas Dr. Luke has written about 27.8% in through two books. In volume, I'm, I mean, not that. I mentioned I'm talking about the volume. Next, John. John is a bit more than other writers. Why? Gospel according to John. Then you have 1st John, 2nd John, 3rd John. And then the book of Revelation. So as a writer, his contribution, the volume of New Testament, 25% is contributed by Dr. Luke. And moreover, as a historian, as a writer, he's, some scholars say, the Bible teachers say that his Greek is so superb. I don't know because I have not learned Greek at all. I know a little bit words. I'm not a scholar in Greek. But the scholars mention that his, life, his writing is so superb, high quality writing. And as you go through all the books, you know, Luke, Gospel according to Luke, as well as Acts of the Apostles, almost nearly 95 persons he is mentioning in these books. From 32 countries, 54 cities, and nine Mediterranean islands in Acts. He's mentioning these places. Accurate. He was with Paul when he was imprisoned in Caesarea, went up to Rome while he was imprisoned. So while he was traveling these places, he 
received enormous amount of information probably he was every now and then scribing writing down taking notes all the information he was collecting you cannot write you cannot sit and write everything at the stretch you need to collect earlier in my studies i showed you how i do my writings how i do my collections i am doing acts of apostles is not one day preparation long before i started the preparation the simultaneously the other preparation will be going on is not that i started uh, the acts of the apostles this week and just presenting you no then and there whenever i find time i keep writing down keeping all the acts together all the look together or revelation together we are supposed to search the bible and do the same thing only then we can grow in the lord we need to acquire more knowledge there are so much information in youtube nowadays learn about the nations learn about paul's missionary journey don't spend time on youtube unwanted things there are many things to divert people from the word of god you need to learn more about the word of god go to the basics search archaeological evidence historical evidence learn about more writers about their background whenever you read a bible when you are we read a book don't straight away go and read the book go to the introduction to the book first and foremost you should you need to have a study bible i don't know how many of you have study bible you need to have a study bible only then you can learn more about the book say you are going to learn about the book of apostles read the book of apostles go to the introduction part read who wrote it what is the theme when it was written date of the book what are the contents how the chapters are classified so let's come to the acts of apostles it is believed that around ad 62 paul uh, luke wrote the book 60 as late as 68 because with the information in the book of acts paul's imprisonment in rome mentions here let's see the theme of the book the book of acts has been described like a drama with two main characters you see there are two important characters one is peter to the gentile uh, to the jews and Paul to Gentiles. We we'll learn later. The theme deals with the spread of the gospel from Jerusalem, the city where Jesus was crucified. From there, it crosses to Rome, the capital of the Roman Empire, and it provides information about the development of the early church. See, actually, the Acts of the Apostles is a church history. It is a foundational book for our church. It should be a church should function based on the Book of Acts. Many gone go away from the book and teach their own. That's different. So it is giving us that. Develop on the early church following the ascension of Jesus. The book of Acts is between the Gospels and the Epistles. Is bridging both between the life of Jesus Christ and the ministry of Apostle Paul and Peter. I would say. The ministry of Jesus is continuing 
after resurrection in the book of acts and goes into the epistles so this uh, acts of apostles is sandwiched between the epistles and the gospels gospel is teaching about the life of jesus christ till the death and ascension and the epistle is teaching about the about the resurrected jesus christ christ i used to tell you before gospel teaches about jesus epistle teaches about messiah christ and acts is the function of the holy spirit jesus is using the holy spirit to teach his function and jesus himself gave the theme to the book of apostles the acts of apostles the principal theme you shall receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you you know that you shall be witnesses to me in jerusalem and all in all judea and samaria and to the end of the earth i showed you the map earlier when you go through this passage those maps should come into your mind where is judea samaria in the middle galilea rome you see as i told you the 27 person of two volume books volume 1 gospel according to luke where he is directly investigating everything from from uh, from the marriage from uh, when mary was conceived uh, elizabeth was conceived he is writing right from the beginning he writes everything and then the birth of jesus christ till such and till he was crucified he died on the cross and he He ascended into heaven, whole thing, and Acts two is the continuation of the ascended Jesus Christ, work of the Holy Spirit. The Gospel according to Luke ends with the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and the beginning of Acts of Apostles starts with the resurrected Christ. intervening with people showing himself resurrected to many when you go through the passage you will know that <coughs> so let's come back to our acts of apostles to whom it was written there is a passage there is a verse in acts 11 in my former book theophilus he says i write now i wrote about all that jesus began to do and teach where in the gospel according to luke until the day he was taken up into heaven after giving instructions through the holy spirit to the apostles he had chosen he gave the instructions what to do after my resurrection they ran away they got up right they went for fishing you know when they saw the resurrected jesus they got strengthened we are bold today because jesus is resurrected we are alive today because he is alive nobody can touch us they were ready to sacrifice their life for the sake of christ they didn't deny because they saw the resurrected christ we are christians because we have the resurrected christ within us so dr luke wrote about jesus what he did what he taught in the former book to theophilus 
So the gospel according to Luke was written to Theophilus. See, see the next passage, gospel according to Luke. And it was written to Theophilus, somebody called Theophilus. Who is Theophilus? Theo, Philo means lover of God, Theophilus. And he is given a title, Most Excellent Theophilus. Where, when he writes in Luke chapter 1, 1 to 4. In chapter, Luke, first chapter, he writes, Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, as they were handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. He says, with this in mind, I carefully investigated everything. So I have decided to write an orderly account for you, most excellent theophilus. You see, to some extent, we can make a, we can conclude what kind of man is Theophilus. Usually the title most excellent is used when a Roman official is addressed. We address the king, your highness. We address the judge, your highness. Same way the Roman officials were addressed with the title most excellent. Probably he was a Roman official. So that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. So Theophilus already was taught about gospel. Probably, many Bible teachers give different views. Some scholars say that Dr. Luke was a slave in the house of Theophilus. Those times, even physicians were slaves during the time of Romans. I don't know. But what I can speculate or assume, this Theophilus, as a friend of Dr. Luke, would have asked Dr. Luke, what is this Christianity is all about? There's so many people are talking about, centurions are talking about Jesus, Holy Spirit. Can you write down everything and let me know I would, so that I can, I can read it whenever I find time? You know, when anyone asks me like this, I'll be really excited to present everything. If they ask me to write it down, then the reason why I'm sending you notes, but the same reason. You can review the notes at any time. By the way, I want to let you know, thank you for many have come today. If any of you have joined new, you send me your WhatsApp number, I can send you the notes. Those who are attending will definitely 100% receive the notes and as well as the regular comers. Maybe due to some work, you may not be able to come certain times. Doesn't matter. But if you come regularly, you will receive the notes. Okay. So, what I feel, that Roman official Theophilus, the lover of God, so they named him Theophilus. Some other Bible teachers say that is returned to those who love God. But, but the title most excellent does not fit there. So what I assume that the, the Roman official called Paul and said, Hey, what man this Jesus is all about? Let me know, I need the detail. What is all that? What did he teach? Why people are excited about him? Why the Romans killed him? He's official. You want to know why they killed him? 
there are many views about him some say he is very good some say no he deserves death why our people heroes killed him why the small children were killed and why this man is roaming around and preaching gospel peter and paul you cannot sit and tell everything at a stretch no time is official probably dr luke wrote and did made a research but in fact it was the holy spirit who composed made dr luke write down everything for the most excellent theophilus he was already he knew certain things but he wanted to confirm it and there are two sections the book of acts can be 28 chapters can be classified into many in many ways the first 12 chapters peter is taking gospel to the jews and the remaining from 13 to 28 paul takes the gospel to the gentiles to the gentile world so you can divide the gospel the acts of the apostle into two sections and also another classification second classification that is three classification three sections he said one day you know you will be a witness in jerusalem judea samaria and in some other you see three sections how gospel was taken to jerusalem chapters 1 to 7 and then when it spread to judea and samaria just chapters 8 to 10 and ends of the year 11 to 28 says that you will be my witness in jerusalem and in all judea and samaria and to the ends of the earth you know you know how beautifully dr luke is writing down things how he, you know he is not confusing every he is is written in an organized way so that the reader can understand very well of course the author is the beginning everything is from the lord from the holy spirit every word of god is inspired by the holy spirit but you need to enjoy the book when you read go through the when you read through the book of the apostles you need to enjoy the historical background you need to do the character study of every every person mentioned there he writes about many nations gathered for the passover festival second chapter he writes about the function of the holy evil spirit as well if you make some mistake the book cannot live forever he was so careful in collecting the information and presenting it presenting it to the christians he tries to make make it clear that the christians are loyal throughout the book why the gospel is being preached even today because the acts of apostles are continuing is a never ending book as long as the church is there the acts of the apostles will continue forever of course this is ending at the chapter 28 but even today the acts of apostles are continuing through you and me and all the missionaries till the church is taken up in rapture and there are about you see the journeys of paul i told you he made about four journeys around these regions we'll go through the places in future then one more classification is there there are five sections 
See, if you go through this, uh, the, the, the verses, 6, 7, spread to this area and reach Hellenists, that means Greeks and Samaritans, and Gentiles in Antioch, is spreading to Asia, Europe, and Rome. And Theophilus, he is writing to Theophilus, Acts 1 2. I wrote all that Jesus began to do and teach till the day he was taken up to heaven. You know, Great Commission, Matthew 28. The commission is being fulfilled. Jesus said, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Christianity, this is called the Great Commission. This is being fulfilled by Paul and Peter. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. You see that? This is the command, the Great Commission. He ordered everyone. They are fulfilling it in the book of the Apostles. In, towards the end of the book of Luke, it says that then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scripture. He told them, this is what is written, the Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You see, the resurrected Jesus spoke to them in the first chapter. That we will see later. But he said earlier, you are witnesses of these things. So in fact, all the apostles are witnessing to the Gentiles, to the Jewish people, that Jesus is resurrected and we are the witness. Dear children of God, why God chose us is not to enjoy the prosperity given by God alone. God chose us to witness His resurrection. Are you resurrected with Christ? Are your deeds are revealing that He is the Son of God? Have we clothed Christ in you? We are clothed with Christ. When people see me, say they, they see this dress. Same way, they ought to see Christ in me. You are witnesses of these things. Not only that. But you are going to be a witness I will give you enough arms and ammunition. You are witness of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised. I am going to give you something. I don't want you to go with your own strength. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from high above. With the Holy Spirit. See, when the government is sending a soldier to fight, they will not send a person empty-handed. They will provide him the uniform and the ammunition, arms. Without that, you cannot go and fight against an enemy. Same way, we are given the Holy Spirit to be a witness for Him and prove that Jesus has come back to life again. He is alive today and I am the witness. Peter was a coward. 
He was a coward. When the servant girl was saying that this man was with Jesus of Nazareth, he said, I don't know you. I don't know him. He said, he gave a oath and he cursed also. He said, I don't know. But later when he was filled with the Holy Spirit, he got up and preached and shouted that you crucified Saint Jesus. You see, from where he got all this power, the disciples. Tomorrow they are going to be executed. James. But they are sleeping in the prison. God did not send them, Jesus did not send them empty handed. He said, wait there. All these acts of the disciples and apostles are written down, presented in an orderly manner in the book of Acts. You will find the activity of the Holy Spirit or Jesus revealing himself through the Holy Spirit. The activities of the disciples, the activity of the persons possessed with the evil spirits. You know, there was a seven sons of Skeva, high priest. They were evil possessed. The activities of the Roman emperors, soldiers, so much details provided. We need to read everything carefully and slowly. Come along with me. I need you to pray for me as well. So that I can present you in a better way day by day. I feel I am getting better because of your prayers. Certainly. No doubt about it. Thank you. Do pray for me. So that we together travel through the book of Acts. You will really enjoy the book of Acts. Do invite your friends. When the whole world is wasting their time on unwanted things, let us spend some time usefully for one hour in a week. I am not asking more time from you. And I am giving everything free of cost. I don't want money. Because Jesus has given us everything free. We will give it free. But don't give anyone those who are not worthy. If somebody is asking you not, tell them to attend. If they cannot attend, provide them. But encourage everyone to attend this Bible studies. Let us see the first passages. We will see. First verse. Jesus taken up into heaven. That's the title. In my form of book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. That's what he said. He was giving every instructions to the apostles. See, he is explaining now. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. It is not a hallucination. Because if only one person has witnessed it, you might say that he is hallucinating. But he presented himself to many people. 500, 3000, it goes on multiplying. They saw with their own eyes. He presented himself to them. Many convincing proof that he is, was alive. He appeared to them over the period of 40 days. After being resurrected, he appeared to them for 40 days. 
You know why all the Christians in the world are bold, even ready to sacrifice, give their life, to chop their head, they allow them to chop their head. Because he is alive. Because our Lord is alive, the death here means we are entering into another world, new world. We will be with him, the Lord. Many times I have shared this witness about Pastor Dibaj in Iran. He was a man of God. The, the government threatened to kill him. He said, it's my duty. My fellow brethren are dying, going to die. They are near the edge of the well. Anytime they will fall down and perish. He said, you cannot, do you think you cannot save yourself? You know that your life is in our hand. The officials told him. He said, if you let me live, I will live for Christ. If you kill me today, I will be with Christ and that would be better for me. You are doing better things for me. So he appeared to them and gave them infallible proofs that he is alive. There are many things I just want to show you a couple of slides and then finishing. This portion we'll see later. Now I want to just compare the finishing now in two slides. You see the Old Testament and New Testament. It is compared to the Old Testament, New Testament. You see Matthew, Mark, Luke and John is like Genesis. How man created. And then after salvation, then you have Acts of Apostles. Our voyage to the land of Canaan, Exodus. So Exodus is compared to the Acts of Apostles. Matthew is like a beginning. You become born again. And in Exodus, we are traveling to the land of Canaan, church history. And the book of Leviticus is the law. You know, the book of Leviticus is about the law. Exodus teaches up how the Lord came into the temple, tabernacle, and Acts teaches us how the Holy Spirit came, came into us. We are the tabernacle. And Leviticus teaches about how you need to enter into the tabernacle. And here the books of Romans to the Hebrews is teaching us how we need to maintain our holiness, the law. Then how to face problems in numbers. And Deuteronomy is the book of Revelation. And one more thing. Old Testament was telling Jesus is coming soon. Coming. He is coming soon. He is going to come. And the gospel said Jesus came already. And he died. Then Acts of the Apostles said, no, 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 he did not die. He is resurrected. Had it stopped with the death of Christ, the Acts of Apostles would have been meaningless. Because he is alive again. And the Acts of the Apostles started. And the book of Epistles is proclaiming is that Jesus is going to come again. Second coming. In the book of Revelation, Jesus came. That means John saw in Revelation Jesus coming. That, in other words, he is going to come again, which was seen by, confirmed by John in his vision. The children of God. Thank you.
I have given you the best explanation. Do pray for me so that I can present you more better things. Read every passage, please. Read at a stretch. Don't read one chapter, two chapters. Try to read it in a day or two. So that the overall feel you will get it. You need to have the bird's eye view of the book. The entire book. And then chapter by chapter you can meditate about it. But this will really help you to grow in the Lord. How to be filled with the Holy Spirit. How to share gospel. Shall we pray? Ask the Lord to open your mind. Ask Him. Keep your hand on your head and say that. Lord bless me Lord. Anoint me with the Holy Spirit. To open my eyes see the one, to see the wonders in the book of the Acts of the Apostles Lord. Ask Him Lord to reveal everything. Father, I bless everyone who have gathered here, Father. Bring them every week, Father, those, so that they'll be blessed. They can become a missionary like Peter and Paul and reach many nations. Be a witness to your resurrection, Father. I bless every one of them, Father. We are going through any difficulties. Keep praying now. I'll pray for your problems. Just pray for it. I will pray now. Whatever the problem facing the Father. I pray that, Lord, you will heal them, touch them, and meet their needs, Lord. I rebuke every sickness, any problems, meet their requirements. I bless them in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, I pray, Amen, Amen. God bless you all. Thank you for coming.